Welcome to the 145 Rural Podcast, where we are here to strengthen music careers and communities one song at a time. And now, here's your host, Jacob Wing. Yay! Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode, episode 9. And today, we are going to go over uh, why you should record yourself and kind of how you should. So, kind of a real quick episode today. Just gonna go over some real quick basics. Um, we're gonna hit the the asterisk first, where you know what this isn't about. So we're not talking about you going deep into recording, you know, and recording stuff to put out into the world. So that is not what today's episode is about. Um, this is all about having a system in place and having equipment in place so that you can record yourself and have a means to capture things as you're writing, as you're putting things together. Uh, If you have all these systems and pieces of gear in order, uh, the the, the cycle of writing songs and getting stuff out into the world becomes quicker, faster, and easier. So let's just get right into that. Um, So as we just touched upon, why, why is it important to to get some recordings done of yourself? And the first thing we want to talk about is inspiration. And inspiration is so fleeting. And I don't care who you are, good memory, bad memory, it, it doesn't matter. You can be working on something one day and have a great idea and think you've got it down pat and this is a great thing, I'm going to move forward to it. And you say, I'm going to just continue doing this and you're going to come to it, come back to this tomorrow. And lo and behold, something happens or you get some different ideas, you know, anything can happen. And that idea is now gone and you can try to pull it back or you can try to try to find your way back to how you found that sound or whatever it may be. But from personal experience and just from talking to so many other songwriters, whatever that was, whatever inspiration you found at that moment is gone. If you don't have it recorded or written down somewhere. Um, So the really, really big thing to start out with is that if you think of something, if inspiration hits you for whatever reason, find a way to record that, be it whatever we talk about today with, your process and what what equipment you have around you or a cell phone or writing it down or just humming it and just repeating it till you can find a way to get that recorded. Um, that That's really important. And if you take nothing else away from this episode, that should be the number one thing. Always find a way to record what you write or what you come up with. I promise you if, you, if you don't need it today, if you don't need it tomorrow, at some point having that just tucked away for another time will be so beneficial. So that's the number one reason why you should record yourself, why you should have a means to do it. Uh, number two, and a really good reason is for um, organizing projects, organizing ideas. As you get deeper into you know a, a year or two and you start to build up some momentum as, as a music career, as an artist and developing your sound and who you are, you're going to start to build a backlog of ideas as you're, you know, this isn't for today. This isn't the sound I'm going to work on today, but let's tuck this away. I know it's a good idea, but I'm not quite ready to put that uh, forward and develop everything in this. And, you know, having a backlog is a fantastic thing, but when they're recorded and when you have a system in place, the organization is so much easier for you to just to go back and say, okay, now's the time. I'm ready to go deeper into this. I'm ready to put out a five song EP or put an album out, or maybe you're just getting a band together for the first time. You need to start sending ideas back and forth. Hey, I've got this piece, this piece, and this piece. Having that and organized and ready to go is so much easier. And it, st- it just gets you to the creative part faster instead of, we uh, going through the weeds and getting stuck. So organizations, a big number two on the reasons why. Uh, number three is something as songwriters, maybe we don't talk about enough, but uh, it's a great way for you to deal with song structure. So like I was saying before, sometimes you're just noodling around and you come up with a great idea, a great concept, some kind of theme for a song. 
and in your head, this you're, you're like, this is genius. This is great. This is going to be a good song. And you just kind of noodle around with it and then you come back to it again, maybe a second time, another day, and you're working through it. It doesn't quite feel the same or it doesn't sound the same. You're like, hey, that, that felt like a good idea that day, but not so much today. If you take the time to just get it recorded, even in, in its rawest form, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can start to hear what the rhythm sounds like. Maybe you need to tweak it just a bit here and there. Maybe there's parts of it that are working really great and you hear something there, but you're just phoning in parts of it. Like if it was a chord progression that worked really well for you. Maybe the, move, maybe the movement between the first two or three chords felt really great. And the fourth part of the fifth part just started to feel really phoned in or you've heard it somewhere else and you needed to tweak it and make it sound like you or sound more interesting to your, your palate. So hearing that recorded really helps you start to put together the structure of, of where that is, how it should be, what the rhythm needs to be. And, and not even to mention just that, the tempo. Sometimes you'll write something and you're just playing along and in your head and you feel it nice and it's a nice soft slow groove and then you record it and you're like well this is kind of boring or you know you're putting it in a in the context of another project where you're doing five songs together and you've already got you know three four really slow songs in this kind of feel and you need to split it up and then you give it a little more tempo you push it a little bit and it's like oh it's its own new thing so just having that recording gives you that context to work with so that's a great way to to really work with song structure. And, and the fourth really good reason to have a, a recording and, and to be recording everything you do is to have personal context. And this is something that you're never gonna notice right away. But if you're doing this consistently, you will start to develop a, a little library of things that you've done over time. And I promise you, when you start to look back over five years, 10 years, 15 years, even though that may look impossibly into the future, the more that you can look back and take a, a retrospective of everything you've done, your, how your sound is development, how your techniques have changed, how you've grown as an artist and, and you can hear how you've grown as a person in your lyrics, your songwriting and, and everything you've done, having a, an archive of what you've done is really invaluable, especially for giving you a, a further direction as to where you want to go at that point, having something to look pat, back on and be proud of but then say, this is where I want to go. I've been here. I've done this. I was weak at this. I'm strong. I'm strong in this now. So let's go forward and move here. Having that is, is a really great re, uh, resource. So those are the, the reasons why you should always be recording yourself and always have a way to record yourself. So now that you're a little bit more convinced and maybe you have a little more reason to do it, let's talk a bit about uh, the equipment that you're going to need to do this. So I kind of broke this down into two parts. This, like I said, this is just for you to be able to capture your sounds and ideas at all times. So this, like I said, this is not about you putting music out in the world. We're not gonna put together a list of things that you have to go out and buy and invest, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars to sound good and to be sharing your music and feel like you're, you're building a, your repertoire and, and, and something like that. This is just the bare minimums to get started as an artist and, and what you should always have. So, and of course, it's not a long list. And some of these things you should already have. It's just part of being a, a modern person in today's society. So hopefully some of these things are just going to be like, oh, I've already got that. No problem. And then, you know, for a lot of you, you've already been doing this. And maybe it's just feels like you're just talking about the same thing and this isn't there, this is going to help you so much, but just making sure further down this list where it'll help you organize things and have a, a mindset and build this system for you since you've already got everything, uh, you'll have a better means of having a system and, and to uh, organize that and to be able to pull from that reserve of things you have. So starting out with the list and the equipment, uh, first things first is of course a means to capture recording uh, is where you want to start. But first and foremost, before we do any of that, you have to start with a computer. You have to have a central hub where everything needs to go. Um, so everybody today has a computer. It doesn't matter what kind it could be. It doesn't matter Mac PC. It doesn't matter if it's a laptop or a desktop. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much 
you know, the stats of the computer, as long as you have one and it works for you right now, that is fantastic. That's all you need. Um, and as a part as of going into the stats, I mean, it's not that they don't matter, but we'll get into that at another time. And you'll feel as you grow, just like with everything, if you're doing enough things where you need more, no more power to get things done, you need more processing power and more RAM and you need a better, you know, uh, graphics card to achieve some of the editing and, and all those kind of things. That's not important now. And you, you, you will know when you need those things. And as a, as to what you need and what's best to use, not super important, but we do have an episode coming out right after this one. Um, the following week after this one with uh, an it expert, uh, Nathan Langendorfer, he, he stopped in and we did an interview and we just talk about all that kind of stuff. So if that's the kind of thing you need to know, like what should I be investing my money in? What kind of computer should I have? That next episode is right up your alley. So just keep your eyes open for that. And he was, a, he was so great or so gracious to stop by with us and, and have that discussion. But so you just, I mean, you just have to have a computer Any computer will do. So the next thing you're going to need is your cell phone. And it doesn't, it's not, it's not that you need uh, everything else, uh, you know, in this order, um, you know, but you need to have, I mean, you already have a cell phone. Clearly, you're already using it. You're either watching this on it, listening to this on your cell phone, or you have one next to you right now. Having a cell phone is just a modern part of the way we live. But the important part about this is that you have a way on you at all times to rec uh, to capture what sounds you're making. what When that muse comes along, you're ready to capture that. And it's great to have the means to record yourself at your, in your normal living situation, wherever you're, you're, you know, your house, your office, wherever you're at, um, your bedroom. But you're not always going to be there. You're going to be out playing shows. You're going to be out rehearsing. You're going to be out just playing music with friends or, you know, in, in different situations when these things hit. And it's important that you have a, a way to, to get that, to, to really have a, a way to put that, put that on something. So, and then you of course have to have a way to take that sound and move it from your phone to your computer. So just having a link between the two, either using, uh, you know, your USB cable or Thunderbolt cable or a, a management system where you can upload it to a cloud, either uh, through iCloud or whatever system you might use to move those sound files on your computer just so they're in a central location it makes a huge difference when it goes back to when it's time that you need to get those sounds and start putting things together when they're in one central location. It's so much easier than when you're just trying to figure out, oh yeah, I recorded that, but where where is it now? Is it on my computer? Did I leave it on my phone? Where Where's that at? So using that is great. So you've got your computer, you've got your cell phone. And then the third, not really audio related, but kind of really important piece of equipment that you need to have as part of this system and this process is a hard drive and I would recommend investing in an external hard drive if you could. Uh, those are so useful just because as you move from place to place, it, you can take it with you or you know it moves with you, but it's also a very safe place to have those files in a very central location. And as you go to you know rehearse with your band, your group or anything like that, you can just take it with you on, on the move. So um, we're going to go just a little bit deeper into to what to do with that since we're here. And then from there, we're going to move on to what kind of audio equipment you need to, to start getting uh, a more reliable and better recordings. But the important thing with this external hard drive is that you need to spend a little bit of time organizing these so that when those creative times do come and when you, you get that, that push to start writing and developing these songs, they need to be in an organized way. So you need to come up with a filing system. And I'm just going to give you a quick example of one that you can use and I found very useful, especially when I'm recording myself. And of course, as I produce other people, 
and other artists and other groups, this has been the best way for me to go back and reference different things and to use those kind of things. So the first thing that you want to do is just have an overall arcing folder for your music somewhere on that drive where it just says music or my, you know, my recordings, that kind of thing. So obvious, it seems obvious, but you should have one central location where these things are all located. The next thing is you want to break down anything down, uh, any kind of files into, to their projects. So if you have a band name or an artist name that you are, that you record under, and that's the only thing you do, that makes it really simple. Just put it, you know, your name or you, the, the band or whatever you are as that folder name. And then any, every recording can go into that folder there. Um, there's a lot of us that work on multiple projects. So as you're having these ideas, maybe that you have a, a sound or a, you know, a, a chord progression came to you where, you know, it's going to sound good for, for your, a different project. So you, you, it's not going to sound good for your solo stuff or what you do on your own, but the band that you're working with, this is perfect. This is that kind of sound. So, you know, make sure that you have, you know, yourself and that, that whatever your project name is, and then anything that you might ever do now or in the future, uh, you know, have separate folders for those. And even if you don't know what those names are, just give them placeholders. And that's a big thing about this is just using placeholders really does help, you know, uh, future song ideas. Boom. There you go. Throw it in that folder. Uh, you know, uh, I want to start a, a rock band later, rock ideas, or, or this is my country music or solo ideas, solo ideas, you know, just as long as you have a subset per project. Uh, the next one, if, as you got them down, broken down into the project is you want to go per song. And again, this is a great place to use placeholders. So just kind of have a numbering system going. Uh, that's what I've used for years is just song idea number so-and-so. So song idea number 35. And then, you know, it's got that. But not just that. I found over time that can even get its, itself a little confusing. And having a second reference in the title of that really does help. So if you're just going song by song, you know, song in this, re in this example, um, <clears throat> song idea number 35. And then after that, I will put uh, the month and the year. That way I have an idea to reference, you know, when was this written? I can always go back to, hey, remember that? Remember I was working on the stuff back then? It was early spring and I had that really good idea. And I can go back like, oh, hey, April 2022. Perfect. And then it's it's just having a secondary system. So you'll know song idea number 35, April 2020, or just April 22. That way you have an idea of when that was done. And having those two separate markers really can help out. But that's just a really quick down a breakdown of what you should do and the ideas that you should use for file management. But it really does make it so much easier when you come back and you're like, I'm ready to start taking on this project or I'm ready to do some development. And, and then you have those organized. And even sometimes I, I can say from experience too, that you go back to these files and these things from you know, 10, 10 years ago, eight years ago, five years ago. And you start picking out these things like, Oh, I wrote that. You know, sometimes it's like, Oh, that was crap. I'm glad I walked away from that. And I clearly didn't have a use for it. But, you know, every once in a while you're like, oh, wow, I'm so glad I took the time to record that. I didn't remember I even wrote this, but this is good. I can make something out of this or I can use this in what I'm working on now. So those kind of things will happen to you if it's just because you took the time to develop this system and do these recordings. So we've talked about the things that you need, not audio related, but you should invest some time and some money into having a way to record in your office, your home, or your studio, wherever you may reside, that's just a little bit cleaner and crisper so that you can share these ideas and not have to explain them so much like, oh, ignore the sound or ignore the noise or just this part and this part. Having a way to capture these, these things and do just the slightest bit of editing can really make a big difference and help you convey these ideas and develop them quicker, faster, and better. And so for that, we're going to need some audio equipment. And I've compiled just the quickest and smallest list that you will ever need just to get these recordings done and make sure that you can execute all these ideas. And 
that list is as follows. So the first thing that you're going to need, obviously, is an audio interface. And that's just the thing that you're going to plug whatever you're doing, either you're recording your voice or your, and your instrument, whatever it is that you've written this song on. You're going to plug it directly into this box or this interface, and that's going to plug into your computer. So if you've never owned one or had one before, they're really, they've come so far and so so amazing and they're so much cheaper than they used to be so there's really no excuse to have one but i i just want to make a quick recommendation for those that are just starting out you're a songwriter and for those that don't have anything yet if you're gonna it, just spend this little bit of investment in this just skip over the very beginning of like the very lowest level and usually what they'll give you is a, a one input for a um, for a microphone and one input for an instrument. And that's fine. If that's all you can do, that's fantastic. Do it. That's fine. But if you can invest, invest just like 50 more dollars, I would suggest getting something with two inputs that have both XLR and instrument level inputs. And the reason for this is that as a songwriter, either you're recorded like writing on your piano or, or your keyboard or your guitar and you're also singing at the same time, you're capturing two different ideas. For the most part, that happens quite a bit. And it's so much easier when you're just getting concepts and ideas just to be able to do them both at the same time. If that's what works for you, then you don't even have to think about it. You just plug them both in, record, you've got, you've got your guitar, your piano separately, you've got the vocal part separate, and it makes it really nice and easy. So the, the lowest thing you should invest in is just one with those two kind of inputs. Uh, the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 is, I believe, anywhere from like $150 to $200. And that's brand new. I always I always suggest going used. But that should be the very first investment you're making. So we've got the audio interface. You've got some way to plug a instrument and your voice into a computer. The next thing I would suggest is that you're going to need a DAW. And a DAW is just a, we've kind of just thrown that term around a bit between our, some of our interviews already and just me talking. But a DAW is a digital audio workstation. It's that little thing on your computer that's going to allow you to edit uh, any kind of audio. So I would not suggest going out and spending a ton of money on this kind of thing. It, you just need something where you're going to be able to organize your sound you know, cut off the beginnings and the ends and maybe a little bit of EQing can be great, but these aren't things that you need to dive deep into right yet. You're not putting, like I said, we're not putting this out into the world. You just have to have them captured. So uh, some suggestions that I wrote down here are all, you know, a free in some way. And that's all that's really important. You do just, just some way to edit these things and organize them and put them where they need to be. Um, Cakewalk is a great free program. I would suggest I started out on that way back when, when it was actually, um, well, I guess that doesn't really matter, but it was way back when <laughs> in the uh, mid nineties when I first had a copy of, of Cakewalk, but it does, it's free now and it, it's great software and it'll do the job. If you have uh, a Mac of any way, it usually comes with a version of GarageBand and that works fantastic. Uh, you can do all the editing you need there for for short things and capture ideas and and stuff like that. So GarageBand, if you have a Mac of some kind, those are fantastic. Um, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into something that you could actually invest your time and money into and you want to grow into, uh, Reaper is fantastic. Uh, it is, I think they have a free 90-day trial for their software and that is, is a great starting place. And then I think it's $60 if you want the full version, which is absolutely crazy, insane cheap for an investment. But um, it also does, I know a lot of people that use that as their main DAW, you know, professionals in the audio world. So I love for myself when I'm going to invest time or start somewhere, I love having room to grow and invest. So that's a great place to start. I would suggest um, if you want to invest money, I would say start with Logic or something like that. Um, I myself have used Pro Tools for 20 plus years and I I don't I don't think I want to recommend that to anybody. And it's not because I'm saying you aren't going to get it or you're not smart enough. It's just there's so many better options now and it feels like the company Avid is 
that uh, that owns Pro Tools now is really making it hard for the everyday musician and people starting out to grow into this and make it part of their their daily routine. And they're finding ways to kind of push people out. It feels like it's just my personal opinion. Doesn't mean it's fact. And if you want to do Pro Tools, by all means. I absolutely love it. I just happen to know all the shorthand and I've spent so many years just learning the ins and outs and I could, I could easily learn a different one. Not a problem, but uh, I do have a backup system I use. It is uh, Studio One by Personas. I'm a huge Personas fan. They make uh, lower cost uh, equipment and software, but it all works at top level, which I really appreciate. There's a couple brands like that are just, I could not recommend enough. Behringer makes cheaper stuff you know that kind of idea um not important now but studio one's also a great option for a DAW. so those are just some great options to get started free and cheaper options but that's where you get your start and that's where you start to do your quick editing and like i said uh, before many many times just go to youtube it'll show you how to do anything if you need to figure out how to do quick edits or you know shape the sound a little bit there's so many tutorials tutorials just type in what you need to do and those are available so now we've got the audio. We've got a way to capture it. We've got a way to edit it. Um, but we need a way to actually get the sound from what we're doing into the audio interface. So we need some microphones. And I would suggest you invest in at least two. Uh, my suggestions at the start for everybody has always been the same for myself, even back in the, in the very beginning. Uh, sure makes some of the most study and study and trustworthy and used microphones out there for beginners and for even professionals. Um, the Sure SM58 is great for capturing live vocals or just vocals in general. It just have a great it has a great spectrum and it, it's just great to start out with. And it has a built-in uh, filter on it, so like a wind wind filter or a pop filter, like this big black thing. If you're watching on YouTube, right in front of my face. Uh, it does help with some sibilance of so that sound of popping. Pop, pop. It, it does make a huge difference. It breaks up that that sound going into there. And so you usually get those for a little bit over $50 or so, 60 for a SM58. Um, if you're going to record your instrument not directly into the interface, like if you have a, a guitar amp or something like that, you want to record an SM57, which is just, you know, one number smaller uh, is a great small condenser uh, microphone that is great for loud instrument sounds like that. And you'll use it no matter what you do in your career. You're going to use that thing. You can use it for live shows. You use it even in your recordings. Uh, whatever level you're at, you're going to find a way to use those things. So, And not to mention the resale value, value on those are always there. And like I said, you can usually get a SM57 for around $50 used. So always go used. So we've got two microphones and then we need a way to connect them Two micro uh, XLR cables. And those are the ones that have the three prong ends. Um, you're going to need two of those just so you have them and always ready. And then one, I would always suggest invest in a really good instrument cable, whatever that may be for you. Uh, I'm really lucky here in the Northwest that we are right next to one of my fable, favorite cable uh, manufacturers, uh, rattlesnake cables. And if you can invest a, a couple extra dollars into an instrument cable, please look them up. I'll put their link in the show notes and in down below, but you should go take a look at those. They are fantastic. And they, I believe they have a warranty with them and they are just built to take a beating and they last a really long time. So invest in those. And I promise you it, it'll pay dividends in the end. So in the end, what we're looking at here, two in the ends. Uh, if you had none of those things for your audio equipment, you're looking at spending about anywhere from 300, 400, $450 in that area, which can be a little overwhelming right now, but a lot of people listening to this either have some or all of those things already. So, and if you do, that just makes this, this list so much simpler to put together and, and you, and you can go from there. But the important thing is that you have a system in place like this and you have all these these pieces of equipment ready to go at any moment's notice so that when it is time to start using your creative juices and putting your, your work into these things, 
it's so much simpler to get to the good part when the, all the hard work and all the other stuff and the monotonous boring crap is already out of the way so that's the real emphasis of this whole episode is just have a way to capture those ideas and those are going to really pay off going forward so i really want to thank you guys for taking time to listen to this like i said before we have a interview with an it expert here coming up just talking about you know the the computer component of what we just went over and some people just really need to hear that kind of stuff and haven't really thought too deeply about it so i would suggest if you if you need some kind of information like that and just want to get some extra knowledge take a listen to that episode coming up next week with uh, nathan langendorfer and then i look forward to seeing you guys in some more episodes so thank you guys again and you guys have a great rest of your day thank you so much bye oh hey there didn't see ya Thank you for joining me on In The Round. In The Round. I don't know where that music came from. But anyways, this is our end of the video segment where we just take a second to thank you again for listening and watching. And also to thank those special people that make this possible, our Patreon supporters. As you can see, they are listed here. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. They get the joke. We can stop now. Clearly we don't have any supporters yet, we're just launching, but if you'd like to join our community and be one of the first few to jump in, we'd really appreciate it, and you could start to see an acorn blossom into a tree. So, really appreciate that help. If you'd like to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more of this content, it should be down, down there somewhere, or you can give us a like if you enjoyed the video. So thanks again, and see you again soon.